We have opened a new channel for those who like to look at the detailed process of creating a project. While there are only a few videos, but we are working on their creation. We promise that it will be interesting. The link is in the description. Hi friends! A couple of years ago, a soldering iron came on the market, which was liked by many amateurs and professionals. In a very short time, the TS-100 gained great popularity, despite the high cost. This is a whole soldering station for all occasions in the handle of a compact soldering iron. Despite its small size and weight of only 35 grams, this soldering iron can do everything thanks to the design of the tip and the ultra-fast control system of power. A lot of time passed since the release of the TS-100, and there were firmware updates, all kinds of gadgets and accessories. But there wasn't a fundamentally new version until recently. Now I present to you the TS-80, a new device of the legendary TS-100 family. At the time of creating this video, I didn't find any real reviews of the soldering iron. So I decided to show the people what it was and whether it was worth its money. I want to note that I have no intention to impose my opinion. If it doesn't coincide with yours, it's completely normal. So, let's compare these two models. Those who have ever held TS-100 in their hands and worked with it know what it is. After it, it is unlikely that they will want to solder with something else. I ask the owners of these soldering irons to share their impressions in the comments. It would seem that TS-100 is good for everyone. Is it worth buying TS-80? In addition, at the moment it costs more than the older brother and only two options of tips are available. And the TS-100 has as many as seven or even more. So let's try to figure out why the Chinese are asking for as much as $80. In fairness, it's worth noting that the adapter charger 3.0 including in kit, which costs $18 itself. Firstly, it should be noted that both options aren't very different in size and weight, but the TS-100 is much more powerful, 65 watts versus 18 to 24 watts TS-80. Is there really enough 24 watts for any soldering tasks? Let's figure it out. The package includes a soldering iron with a tip, a ground wire, which is used only by super professionals, a key for disassembling a soldering iron, a very elastic power cord from the USB to Type-C in non-flammable silicones insulation, and a power adapter. Universal Power Adapter Quick Charger 3.0, depending on the consumer, can produce a different voltage at the output. The maximum is 12 volts at a current of 1 and a half amperes. Here I want to draw your attention to an important point. The maximum power of the soldering iron is 24 watts, but it seems that the adapter itself can't give out so much. In fact, it gives such power. To make sure it is enough to connect the soldering iron through the appropriate USB tester and cool the soldering iron tip, so that it seeks to maintain the set temperature on the tip, that is, it gives out full power. Now on a USB tester, the power is about 22 watts, while in the test I got a little more than 24 watts, so 24 watts adapter really gives out. The new model, in contrast to the old one, already has a completely metal case of exquisite quality, therefore a couple of grams is heavier. It is thinner and is about a centimeter shorter than the TS-100. The weight of the soldering iron without a tip is about 21 grams, and with a tip is 35.5 grams. At the moment, there are two variants of the tips for the soldering iron, sharp and beveled on both sides, as in my case. Such a tip, in my opinion, is much more universal than sharp one. Both soldering irons can be programmed, set the time for entering the standby and sleep mode, set the temperature in the standby mode, and other relatively useful settings. In the case of the TS-100, this can only be done by connecting the soldering iron to a PC or smartphone, but in the case of the TS-80, this is not necessary. All the necessary settings can be changed using the control buttons, but it should be noted that both soldering irons are built on the same chip, so it's possible now there a uh, firmware that will allow you to do the same in the case of TS-100. 
Let's go over the settings of the new Moodle. At first, I will say that the factory default parameters are set, which can be customized. In order to begin heating the tip, you must press the left button. To change the temperature, press the same button and hold for about a second. Then adjust the temperature. To enter the settings of the soldering iron, press the right button and then scroll through the menu Items. If you need to edit the item, press and hold the left button until the brackets appear and then you can change the value. To save the value, wait a few seconds until the brackets disappear, then press the right button. By default, the power of the soldering iron is set at 18 watts. It can be increased up to 24. In menu, you can set the temperature adjustment step, the time of entering in the standby mode, the time of the complete shutdown, the value of the supply voltage at which the over voltage protection operates, the temperature to which the soldering iron heats up by default after switching on. Also, it is possible to turn the display position upside down. Select the Celsius or Fahrenheit scale, adjust the power and reset all settings. Both soldering irons have an accelerometer. If you don't use a soldering iron, it enters the standby mode and the temperature starts to drop. And after some time, the soldering iron enters at sleep mode and the tip cools down completely. If you take a soldering iron in your hands in standby mode, the tip will automatically begin to heat up to working temperature. And this is a very, very convenient feature. As you already understood, the soldering iron is powered by a Type-C connector. Unlike conventional micro-USB, such a connector is more versatile and multifunctional, and as you plug the cord, there is no difference in the upside-down position. But, despite the convenience, the question arises, how durable is it? When working, the soldering iron is constantly moving and the power connector is the most vulnerable part. In conventional smartphones, they break quite often, so in my opinion, this isn't a very good solution in terms of reliability. Instead, the connection gives such a plus as the ability to power a soldering iron from a power bank with the support of fast charging. Unfortunately, I don't have that, and the soldering iron doesn't want to switch on from the usual 5 volt power bank, referring to the low supply voltage. But with this voltage, you can change the soldering iron settings, although that's not enough to heat the tip. The tips of both soldering irons are monolithic, made with the same technology and adapted to a specific model. In TS100, the tip can be changed by unscrewing the locking screw. In the case of the TS80, everything has been done much more conveniently. Well, just pull it out. By the way, the tip itself is quite interesting. It is connected with a soldering iron through the most common 3.5 mm jack. Contacts are gilded and in general everything looks reliable. About assembling quality, the TS100 is pretty good, but the new model is better. It is like an expensive phone, no backlash, everything is in its place. It is very convenient to change the tip, but the control buttons are somehow inconvenient. In the TS100, they are immediately under the thumb and the soldering iron easy to manage, although you can get used to this arrangement of buttons after some time. The displays on both soldering irons are the same size and OLED type. On this, we will end an external examination and will proceed to the experiment. In both models, install the same tip. Well, in any case, the most similar. For the TS100, a 24-volt power adapter is used, which provides sufficient current to allow the soldering iron to give maximum power if necessary. In the case of the TS80, an adapter and a power cord from the kit are used and the maximum power of 24 watts is set. The first test is whether the display temperature is correct. The temperature of the tip will be measured by the contact method using a thermocouple. As we can see in both cases, the real temperature value corresponds to what is displayed on the displays. Test number 2. Heating time from 0 to 300 degrees.
The older model needs only 6 seconds and the soldering iron is ready for operation. The novelty is heated for as much as 20 seconds. This is understandable. The TS100 is much more powerful, but still it is 1 to 0 in favor of the TS100. Some will say 20 seconds is pretty fast. I agree. But you expect something more from a soldering iron for a lot of money. And now we compare them in work and see how the new model will show itself in battle with an older brother. At first we try to solder surface of the foiled glass fiber. The soldering iron is heated to 400 degrees. The maximum power of 24 watts is set. Excellent! Despite the lower power, device showed its best. Soldering is very convenient, the solder doesn't cool. And what is in the case of more heat-intensive compounds? The soldering iron is still doing well. Now we will toughen the test. First test the older model. Well, it is solder the bolt, not bad for 24 watts. Let's go ahead. Stranded copper wire with a cross section of 6 square millimeter, it's between 10 and 11 AWG. Now we twist two of those wires. Surprisingly, this is just 24 watt soldering iron. Now the most difficult, welding cable with a cross section of 25 square millimeter or about 3 AWG. The soldering iron struggles to do something, but alas we have the lack of sufficient power. As a result, we got the cooling of the solder right on the end of the tip. You can clearly see that the temperature decreases despite the fact that the value set at 400 degrees. 24 watt isn't for this. In the case of the TS100, the set temperature is kept strictly at the level of 400 degrees. It isn't a problem to solder such a cable for TS100. I have prepared more serious tests, but I'm afraid that this soldering iron will not cope with superheat capacity. So, will be no problem to unsolder components from the PC motherboards to tin the power pads and so on. In amateur radio practice it will be enough for any works, but for some extraordinary work there isn't enough power. Well, at the very end let's disassemble it. 
I will not disassemble TS-100 because I showed all the stuffing previously in the corresponding videos. First, you need something to put up the control buttons. Then, unscrew and remove the top of the case. From the point of view of disassembly, everything here is much more convenient than in the case of the TS-100. Here is all the stuffing collected on just one board. We take it out. Components mount is two-sided. Only planner items are used. Everything is done very nicely and neatly. After carefully peel off the display, we will see the accelerometer and the main processor. As in the case of the TS-100, this device is also built on the basis of a 32-bit chip STM32. Control buttons are nearby. The power part is located on the reverse side. Here you can see the RT7272 chip, which is a 3 ampere step-down DC-DC converter. We also have a component marked HM1802. It is a field effect transistor. In general, the stuffing is very good. I can say everything is almost the same as in the case of the TS-100, but this time it's all collected on one board for compactness. Let's assemble all back. Well, in the end, my subjective opinion. Yes, the new soldering iron is more ergonomic and neat. It can be powered from the power bank and used as a portable one. Will I begin to use TS-80 continuously? Most likely no. I actively used it during the week and I think that such a soldering iron will be very useful if portability is needed. But, if there is already a TS-100, I see no reason to change soldering iron. There is almost no difference between them, except that the TC-100 is more powerful. If you have a TC-100 and you are thinking about buying a TC-80, then you should be a very big fan of products from this company. Is this a good soldering iron or not? Certainly good. Its power is enough for everyday works. It easily suppresses the usual soldering irons from the stations, but on the other hand, the price is very high, despite all the advantages of a soldering iron. Well, here is my review, comparison and personal opinion of the new product of this year. I hope it was useful. Links to both soldering irons can be found in the description. Please don't forget to rate this video and share it with your friends in social nets. If you have any questions related to electronics, you can ask them in our group. The link is also in the description. Well, on this I say goodbye. As always, with you was Kasyan TV.